Welcome back to our channel where we're taking a deep dive into the essentials of pool maintenance. Today we're going to unravel one of the more confusing aspects of pool chemistry, total alkalinity. Stick around to find out why it's just as important as pH and chlorine for keeping your pool crystal clear and safe. So what exactly is total alkalinity? In simple terms, total alkalinity is a measure of a water's ability to resist change in pH. It's like a buffer that helps maintain a stable pH level in your pool. Why is that important? Well, pH has a direct impact on swimmer comfort, as well as the most important swimming pool chemical for maintaining sanitary water, chlorine. For that reason, it is important we understand what pH can do to chlorine first to fully understand the impact total alkalinity has on chlorine. For the purposes of this video, we are not talking about indoor pools or pools without cyanuric acid in them because this drastically changes the relationship between pH and chlorine. This chart from Arenda helps to illustrate exactly what happens to our different forms of sanitizing compounds at various pH levels. Our strongest form of sanitizer is the bottom red line or hypochlorous acid. You can see that as the pH increases across this scale, the percentage of HOCl gradually decreases to essentially nothing. Once your pH goes above 8.0, you've lost about 15 to 30 percent of your strongest sanitizing agent. The weakest sanitizers or hypochlorites are represented by the yellow line, which has a direct relationship with the blue line at the top. The blue line at the top are isocyanurates or chlorine, which has bonded to the CYA present in the pool. As pH rises, the chlorine separates from the CYA and becomes the weaker sanitizing agent, which is why you see the yellow line increase at approximately the same rate you see the blue line decrease. So if we forget all the fancy chemical names I just used and only focus on what is happening to the two most effective parts of our free chlorine, we can see that as the pH increases, both of those are reduced significantly and the weaker form of our sanitizer increases as that happens. In short, high pH equals weaker chlorine, regardless of how much of it you have in the pool. Conversely, while the pH is more effective at lower pH levels, it becomes far more unstable and dissipates rapidly, so too low of a pH isn't good either. It is worth mentioning here that cyanuric acid being too high can also impact chlorine's ability to do its job. However, that's a whole different topic for another video. For this video, we are just assuming that the CYA is below 150 parts per million. Getting back to the total alkalinity, we know that total alkalinity, when adjusted properly, prevents your pH from fluctuating. And now we also know that pH high equals bad and pH low equals bad. So to maintain our pH as close to between 7.2 to 7.8 as possible, we need the total alkalinity to be within a certain range. And generally speaking, there are exceptions, but generally speaking, you want that between 80 to 120 parts per million. So what do we do if it's outside of that range? Well, if your total alkalinity is lower, adjusting it back up is fairly simple. Sodium bicarbonate is added to the pool or total alkalinity increaser at a rate of about one pound per 10,000 gallons for a 10 parts per million increase. This means if you had a 10,000 gallon pool and you wanted to go from 80 to 120, that you would put in four pounds. It's worth noting that this will increase the pH also, so you need to offset with some acid after the fact. Uh, if it's high, it's a little bit more complicated, especially if you're a pool service professional who doesn't really have the luxury of adding acid and retesting later in the day to observe the impact. Generally speaking, your goal is to lower the pH to around 7.0, which in turn will lower the total alkalinity over time. The problem with this is that with high TA pools, oftentimes the pH is already high, and on top of that, the total alkalinity is preventing your acid additions from working as effectively to reduce the pH because, as we mentioned before, when it's high, it actually protects that pH from change. So a play pool of just 10,000 gallons can sometimes take between one to two gallons of acid before the pH reaches a point where it will begin to degrade the TA. I've even seen it take more than that. 
To make matters worse, if you undershoot and return the following week, you're not really going to see any change at all. Uh, if you're a pool pro and you're only making a minor adjustment, say from 160 to 120, then this should be relatively easily accomplished by putting in one gallon in the deep end uh, per 10,000 gallons of pool water. You may need to increase this if your readings are extreme or if the first dose does not work. If you're a consumer and doing this from home, then it's far safer to add a quart of acid every three to five hours with the pump running into the deep end and just retest the pH. Each time you go out there, if you see you've arrived at that 7.0, then we just leave it there until the alkalinity reduces to the point where we want it. Once your total alkalinity reaches the point where you want it, you can do a couple different things. You can just leave the pH alone and it will most likely correct on its own. A pool generally has a natural tendency to go upward on the pH scale. It's just physics. It's Henry's law. Uh, there are some exceptions to this. Vinyl liners, fiberglass pools, this sort of thing. There's a couple others, but most pools will come up on their own. If you want to expedite the process, you can also aerate the water. You can aerate the pool using your aerator valve, a waterfall, uh, spa therapies, a blower, anything like that will help the pH come up just due to the aeration. Additionally, if you're struggling with a pH climbing too quickly and you have your water features on or you have your spa therapies running continuously or your aerator, that could be why. All right, well, now you've probably got your total alkalinity balanced and you don't have to worry about your pH bouncing all over the place and affecting your chlorine anymore, at least for a while. Uh, total alkalinity can need a adjusted up to or as much as once a month. Well, that's all for today's dive into pool chemistry. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more tips and tricks on keeping your pool in perfect shape. Thanks for watching and if you have any questions on pool chemistry, don't hesitate to put them in the comments below.